Hi there. I'm Scotty. I'm a practicing witch and a professional tarot nerd. I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to take a look at another of my Wheel of the Year spreads, the Beltane Season spread. If you'd like to take a walk with me through the Wheel of the Year, I've dropped a link to that video in the description below. The Beltane Season spread covers the time between the Spring Equinox, also known as Ostara, and Beltane. It's roughly March 21st to May 1st. These dates can differ depending on how you practice. But before we go on, let's, let's talk about pronunciation. The word itself comes from the Celtic language family, and I won't bore you today with a discussion of linguistics and language classifications other than to say this. There are lots of ways to say words, and as words migrate, new speakers just might say them differently. Beltane is an Englishy pronunciation, and it's the pronunciation I first heard when I was starting out on my witchy path. Well, that's, that's not entirely true. The first time I ever heard of Beltane, it, it was pronounced Mayday. But you can say it Beltana, if you like, or Beltane, or even Beltane. But what's most important is what the celebration means to you. There's a lot of information about the origins of Beltane, and not all that information is correct. And that's not even important right now. To me, the celebrations on the Wheel of the Year are more about connecting to the cycles of life on this blue marble we call Earth. And everyone, every when and everywhere, connects to the cycles in their own way. And I think that's cool. All that being said, there are a few things we can be relatively sure of. In the past, there was a celebration of some sort, which occurred around this time of the year throughout the Celtic language-speaking cultures, and it was tied to agriculture and pastoralism. If your life depends on your crops and herds, it's a good idea to make sure they do well. You might even want to do things to encourage the crops and herds to do well. Everybody likes to be encouraged at least once in a while, right? So. You're living a long time ago, and the scarcity of winter is falling away. The world is waking up. It's time to move your herds out to the pastures where the grass has begun growing again. Moo. When I was growing up, this time of year meant that I didn't have to put hay out for the cows every day. Moo. As a boy, that was a slog, I'll tell you. During the winter, I had to put out hay every morning before heading off to school. I even had to do it on the weekends. And it was cold and dark, and every morning the cows would be there waiting on their breakfast. But this time of year, I didn't have to do that anymore. The grass in the pastures was greening up, and there was plenty for the cows to eat. I imagine it might have been like that for my ancestors, too. This is also the time of year that a lot of baby cows get made so that they can show up just in time for next spring. Ooh. And if a big part of your life depends on your herds, you might even do a thing or two to encourage those herds to grow. Another thing about Beltane that we can be relatively sure of is that it included fire in some way. Archaeologists have found evidence of large and recurring fires which match local folklore around Beltane. The folklore describes the lighting of large fires between which the herds were driven. And this may have been to protect the cattle from disease or to encourage fertility. If you've seen my video about circles, you heard me tell Gary stories about me making fire in ritual spaces or of uh, not being able to make fire in ritual spaces. Before recording, I, I do a little thing to set my magical space, and today we're going to see if I can break my streak. This is my cauldron. Um, it's not cauldron shaped, but it's a. This was my grandmother's, my grandmother's Dutch oven. There's a lot of stuff that we can say about fire. I got a little stack of wood down here. Well, 
Ah, fire. There is so much that can be said of fire. Every culture I can think of, which I know even a little bit of mythology about, has lots of stories about fire. About how humans were given or acquired it. And of course there would be lots of stories about fire. I don't think that we can really say that we humans discovered fire. I'm pretty certain that fire has been around a bit longer than human beings. But discovering the technologies necessary to make fire and to utilize it may have been the greatest technological advance humanity has ever made. Cooking our food allowed us a much wider and more varied selection of nutrition. And pottery, practically impossible without fire, makes cooking and storing our food even easier. Fire allowed our ancestors light at times and in places previously obscured. The warmth it offered allowed our ancestors to live in colder climates. Now I could keep going, but I think you get my point. Fire has been important in every area of human life I can think of. The modern Beltane seems to be an amalgamation of folk practices, including the Maypole. Because sometimes people like to party, right? And sometimes we party to celebrate something. Now these days it seems to me that we celebrate stuff that's already happened. You know, birthdays, anniversaries, even our modern holidays, holy days, by and large, are celebrations of things that have already occurred. And it seems to me a lot of our celebrations are for things we already have. The celebrations on the wheel of the year, on the other hand, as I see them, are celebrations of things we want to experience. They are celebrations of hope. For me, this season and this spread is about the rising energies leading us into summer and about the celebration of growth that the coming summertime brings. The Beltane season begins with the spring equinox around March 21st and continues until Beltane around May 1st. During this time of year, we begin to see the first stirrings of the heat of summer. It's a time to celebrate and encourage the energy of summer into our lives. Card number one is where we are at the start of the season. We can consider this position to hint at the theme for that season. Now, card number two shows us an area of life where we need to encourage our energy, where we, where we need to bring that energy in. Card number three provides advice on ways to encourage that energy into that area of our life. Number four shows us an area in our lives in which we need to encourage cleansing or perhaps protection. And card number five gives us advice on ways to accomplish that. Card number six shows us an area of life in which we need to encourage growth and fertility. And card number seven gives us advice on ways to promote that. And with card number eight, it shows us the, the potential energy at the end of the season culminating with Beltane. It's still going. Today I'll be using the Wildwood Tarot because it's just it's just so very green. And the overall feel of the deck feels kind of Beltane-y to me. Now a note about this deck. Each of the cards has a description or keyword in addition to the number and suit. To be honest, this is the only thing I don't like about this deck. While keywords are frequently helpful, since what I get from a card during a reading doesn't always match the keyword, 
I feel that the keywords are a distraction, not so much to myself, but perhaps for the seeker. And this deck doesn't always follow a traditional pattern when it comes to the numbers on the minors. But when you encounter a deck for the first time, be prepared to adapt to differences from the deck or decks that you're accustomed to. So this is my Wildwood deck. It's getting a little long in the tooth. You can see the fading around the edges. It might be soon time to retire this deck, but it's not quite that time. You don't see me uh, shuffle these before because I actually take and uh, shuffle the deck up, lay the cards out, and I'll do, the, do a reading before I get to this part. So this isn't cold, I'll be honest with you about that. And in full disclosure, as I do that reading, I read it for myself. But these may not be those same cards. Um, there's parts of me that I'm going to keep to myself. So I may change an orientation or I may change a card um, for purposes of demonstration. But when I first do the reading, I'm reading the spread for myself. So we're going to start here with uh, the beginning of the Beltane season. That's the energy at the start. It could be the theme. And we have our nine of vessels. That's, that's cups, that's water, that's emotion. And this card does feel reversed. Um, and we see, uh, we see this long-haired, hippie-looking dude, um, almost in a pose of meditation and... But it's that reversed feeling. It's those times when we just emotionally drained, exhausted, out of gas. Um, like after a long day at, at work when we're just, we feel empty. And that's the energy at the start. And this would be the, at, at um, Ostara, which started up a couple of weeks ago. So that can indicate that starting from a place of emptiness. Um, where are we going to go from there? Well, the way the place to encourage energy is the two of stones. All right, now that stones is pinnacles, that's earth energy, and we can see that indicated. We've got a lot of growth and stuff. And we have these two hairs. Um, this time of year, this was a weird card to come up here, and it came up in this position. Um, the phrase mad as a March hare. Um, well, that's because this time of year, uh, the hares in their native in, uh, environment will um, they'll box, they'll fight. Um, it's the it's part of the whole mating process for this animal, and uh, and they're fighting over girlfriends. They call this card challenge. And like I said, some of the ways that they interpret the numbers are a little different than in. Some of the uh, some of the more traditional decks, with this one here, the two of stones reversed, we have that conflict. Place to encourage energy is to encourage a sort of sense of peace, a stability. Um, so, um, peace and the energy. You know, we think of of energy, and I don't have energy, or I'm. I'm full of energy, uh, it seems to be contrary to that idea in some ways. But that energy itself, that energy of peace, that stillness, that um, not struggling against the inevitable. And what's some advice on that? How might we encourage it? We have the five of vessels. This five, again, is one that doesn't follow that traditional um, approach to the number five. This is not a Kabbalistic deck. We see here these 
five cups and our figures dancing in between them. They call it ecstasy. Way to encourage this peaceful energy may be through some sort of, of ecstatic practice. Drumming, dancing, playing music, emotional expression. And if we started off with not much emotion, what does that mean for us? Well, sometimes we just have to do the thing that sort of primes the pump and gets things going. This, this uh, is the area of life where we need like cleansing or protection. And I thought it was really funny when this little guy showed up and it actually said protection right on it. With the four of stones. And we see these four stones here in this sort of um, men here kind of approach. And this little, little guy here is hanging out in there in sort of a safe place. Um, boundaries. Maybe a place where we can protect ourselves. Um, and that's the way that this feels. This feels more of a protective kind of thing. How can we encourage that sort of set of boundaries and a feeling of, of safety and security? We have our nine of stones. And with this nine of stones, we see, well, he looks kind of like this guy. And he's sitting in a meditative pose, holding the serpent. This is very much an image off of the Gundestrup cauldron. It was found in Austria. It's got a lot of um, Celtic kind of imagery on it. And we see all of these stones in the background. and Full moon, he's meditating. And the horns pointing to the wild side, but digging in, going deeper. Snake, a symbol of transformation. The torque, a symbol of power, almost like a crown. And here he is with these two symbols. So perhaps making sure we get that meditation in can help us build our own personal strength and set our personal boundaries and could very much encourage this sort of ecstatic stuff to bring that feeling of peace. For the area of our life of, of um, fertility and prosperity, we see here the six of arrows, and they call it transition, and this card is often about movement and um, travel sometimes. Arrows in this deck is the element of air. It's how we think and perceive. So places to grow, increasing knowledge, changing perspectives, changing the way we look at things. Sometimes that's from trying something new. Um, that might be exploring a topic that um, we previously hadn't really found interesting or that we found uncomfortable. It helps us change our perspective. And the thing that I think is interesting is we have the moon here and the moon here tying these two cards together. I don't think I mentioned it before, but the fact that these are nines and we have similar figures ties these two cards together. That's one of the ways that I interpret the tarot and why I flip everything over, because it helps me see those connections right away. So here with our six of arrows in this transition state, fellas in this boat with the swan and on the waters, and the waters are kind of smooth. There's a wind coming from somewhere. Doesn't seem to be blowing the trees. Maybe this is a spiritual wind or the, the winds of thought that can help us move. We have this men here pointing up, kind of references back to this. So to grow and to um, provide a sense of, of prosperity, changing the way we look at things and think about things can be an area in which that can help with growth. How do we go about that? Well, we do the work. With the Eight of Stones, we have our fella here working on these, these different pots and different artifacts and these different lamps. He's got these four here and these three here and the one he's working on. Different aspects of self may be indicated here, but the big thing is he's going to work. He's getting it done. And previous work, 
can help light the way. So things we've done before, things we've, projects we've started and maybe abandoned, things that can help us grow this change in perspective, looking at things in a different way, can help with that growth and, uh, and that fertility in this aspect of life. And at the end of the, the season, the energy at the end of the season, it can feel this way with our page of bows. So bows is the element of fire in this deck. That's inspiration, illumination. It's creativity and it's drive. And with the page of bows, I see the pages as the teenagers of the tarot deck, full of energy and sometimes not real wise but full of energy. Um, I associate the pages with fire. The stoat himself, he's a member of the weasel family. He's a little bendy little critter. And they're curious, but they're also, you know, they're, as an animal, they are, they are predators, they're hunters. They go seeking what they're after. But at the same time, in all of this growth in the background, even though this is a fire card, we have this water coming down. This water in the background brings a sense of, of emotional or spiritual um, growth or movement to it. So all in all, what, we're, what it seems to me here is that this, this spread, this layout here is indicating setting our boundaries, um, reestablishing safe places, whether it's in reality or in the soul or in the mind, changing our perspectives, working on things, working at looking at things differently, bringing a sense of, of peace by encouraging that emotional or spiritual growth. All in all, this looks like a pretty good spread. And there we have the Beltane season spread. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. If you've enjoyed that time, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. My name is Skaji, 